Hi everyone, I'm Leila Al Habsi, and welcome to the Omani Female Geoscientist Recognition Series. Um, today we'll be joined with our special guest, uh, Saad Al Rawahi. Uh, this series, of course, is very important for the Geological Society of Oman. It started this year. Uh, and the three main objectives of this series is to number one, create a platform to encourage networking between Omani female geoscientists in the field, especially to the young professional uh, geo uh, geoscientists that are coming up. Our second objective, of course, is to recognize and celebrate these successful Omani female geoscientists and share their, that, that keep sharing and implementing their knowledge in the field of geoscience to help develop and improve the future of Oman. Third but not least, of course, to share their experiences, successes, and failures, and most importantly, to learn from these successful female geoscientists. So today we're having our special guest, Saad Rawahi, who is working at Petrogas, and she will be joining us shortly. Hi, Sada. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Laila. Well, it is an honor for me to be here with you today. And I really, I mean, appreciate to be invited for this uh, uh, special, uh, I mean, uh, uh, platform where female geoscientists can meet and share their knowledge and experience. And I would like to congratulate everyone who has contributed to this uh, well uh, uh, organization of having this uh, program live and uh, well to have it uh, happening as we are today thank you thank you so much thank you so much for joining us it's a pleasure and honor for us to have you on the geological society of Oman platform of course so how about you tell us about yourself and the position you're handling at petrogas Right. As you, you have heard from Laila, my name is Saad Rawahi. Yeah, well, uh, to start with, I'll just give you a brief uh, introduction of my education and uh, professional career journey. Yeah, after finishing my high school, I joined uh, PDO as a scholar. Then uh, I took a one year course here in Oman, English course. After that, we were, I was sent to UK mm -hmm. to study well, the geophysics in Leeds University from 1990 till 1995. I graduated with bachelor degree in geophysics. Wow. <laughs> After that, I came back to PDO and I worked uh, within exploration for one year that time it has given it gave me an introduction to what is going on in oil and gas company yeah i get an opportunity to move around within exploration from different team and see how, how the work uh, is uh, happening there after that i was uh, again i mean posted for msc in aberdeen to do well, MSc in Petroleum Geosciences, yeah, with the other uh, four colleagues from Oman. Then after finishing, I came back and I worked for PDO for around seven years as a seismic interpreter. Yeah, all that time I moved. <laughs> I, you see, I moved you can see the, the increase in like level every time you came back, you came back stronger. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's life. I mean, and then it depends on yourself as well. If you show interest and work hard, uh, you, you get rewarded for that. Yeah, so I moved within PDO, I mean, from gas team to oil team. So I gain in knowledge from different aspects of oil and gas uh, in evaluation department. In 2004, I moved to Shell uh, Sarawak, which is in Malaysia. And I spent there in QI team, which is quantita seismic quantitative interpretation. This is another branch of the geophysics or another branch right. of seismic evaluation which has given me an addition knowledge to what I was doing before. 
2008, I came back from uh, Malaysia and I, I came back to PDO. But honestly, I was there just for one year. And during that, during that year, I mean, at the beginning, I didn't have the intention of moving out from PDO. But I received two offers within two months from different companies. Wow. So, yeah. so they knew. They knew <laughs> she's here with new knowledge. We have to grab her. <laughs> yeah. Course. I mean, they thought, yeah, with the growing, uh, with these opportunities uh, of opening up new companies uh, in, in Oman. So they were looking for people at that time. And uh, well, myself as well, uh, I started thinking uh, of uh, career growth, where I can be better. I mean, where I can uh, progress Father, then uh, well, uh, I, I chose and would, went to Petrogas. Okay, would you say that your reputation was also somewhere, and that's why people knew who you were because of the hard work that you put in? Because that's very important, especially for females, where they know in a male-dominated industry that you know what she has, she has a reputation of working very hard. I think so. Yeah, I believe <laughs> that yeah, that's your right. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I had uh, people I know them. Some uh, because I, I, after four years, I thought uh, nobody would remember me. <laughs> yeah, of course not. Yeah, but working hard definitely leaves a, leaves leaves a mark in in the yeah. society. Definitely. Yeah. So you moved to Petrogas after that. Yeah. Then I moved yeah, to Petrogas. Uh, well, within that week, I was asked uh, to move to Dalili Petroleum. As you know, Dalili Petroleum is part of Petrogas. Uh, it's a 50-50 venture with Petrogas, yeah, with a Chinese company. So at that time, uh, Dalil, uh, it is just started growing. They have only few drilling rigs, I think only one or two. And they didn't have any geophysics within the company. So, well, uh, when they got me that time in Petrogas, they say, why not you join Dalil? And, uh, well, I, I thought, why not? Yeah. If I accepted yeah. to come to Petrogas, then uh, why not to going to Dalil? It is another opportunity to be there. But my fear was uh, going there, I would be alone as a geophysicist. Yeah. And uh, I always think back when I was PDO, there was uh, plenty of uh, geoscientists. I mean, if you stuck in something, you can just go pop around and ask anybody else around you for help. Yeah. So this, in Dalila was new to that kind of environment with a new expectation from the company. Every, I mean, uh, the whole company from top to bottom, they were well uh, ex expecting from me as a geophysics to support them in every aspect of geophysics. They didn't mm -hmm. know that it is a different, yeah. I mean, geophysics is a big uh, uh, subject. Big field, they didn't yeah. Know. Yeah, big field. They didn't know that. They thought that, uh, yeah, you are a geophysicist and then you will know all about geophysics from acquisition to, well, uh, from gravity, magnetic, uh, seismic acquisition and, uh, well, processing and evaluation. Well, but uh, I took that uh, so, challenge. So just to just to understand, so you were going into Dalil and you were the only geophysicist. We're not talking about the only female. You were the only geophysicist. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Wow. That That is a challenge. That is definitely a challenge. Yeah. It was. Yeah. That, yeah. But then they I give you more morale and more boost. You feel, yes, now I have to do it. Yeah. You are in the spot. Yeah. And so, and so Every, you have to bet on yourself and you have to find that confidence within you and trust yourself. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. I mean, uh, and then, well, the fear is inside you, but then uh, you accept the challenge and uh, of course you'll find your way out of it to prove, to prove that you can do that. Yeah. I remember when, when, yeah, when I joined it, then 
everything was me from uh, supporting the company from operation, updating the maps because uh, they were they had that time very old maps and uh, the seismic uh, they had very old, very patchy here and there. Yeah, different vintages from different companies. They were, I mean, acquired and processed. Yeah, so then, uh, well, my my job was to start, I mean, look into this uh, data, try to well, convince management, first of all, to reprocess the data, which uh, they, of course, accepted it. it. And uh, yeah, there, there is a yeah. reputation in the market. The geo, geo geosciences, all of us love extra data. We just always ask for extra extra <laughs> data. So so I understand where you're coming from. That is very important, especially that you're telling us that the the maps were kind of outdated and stuff. It must have been really another challenge on top of the already challenge you had. So wow, wow, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. Sada. Yeah, well, like, continuing with that, I mean, I was say, okay, uh, find a contractor who can reprocess the, the existing data. And then uh, after we got the data, but still uh, we found there's uh, some gaps within the data. I mean, uh, the data, which is very old, uh, whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to reprocess the data, still you're not going to get uh, a quality data which will please uh, anybody who will evaluate it. So in the third year, I again went back to the management asking for the new data to acquire new seismic data. Yeah. And, and then you were you were good. You were like, okay, now I can totally start from somewhere. Well, uh, then uh, they, they accepted it and they are asking me, are you going to do this work or is it we needed to, to employ somebody else? I say, come on, guys, this is, is another field of geophysics. I mean, seismic acquisition uh, is, uh, is, a, is a subject or a, a department by itself. Uh, we needed to plan for this and, uh, of course, execution. Uh, and I was the manager for that project, which uh, alhamdulillah, <laughs> I managed uh, to contact my well colleagues from long time back from PDO in the exploration department in uh, seismic acquisition, who really supported me and uh, helped me on that. Uh, we came up together and with the plan and uh, yeah, we executed the project. We acquired a new seismic, which was uh, the advanced seismic uh, wide azimuth uh, data uh 3d 3d cost i don't don't ask me about the cost of it uh, <laughs> that's always the main factor when it comes down to data it's the cost the cost is <laughs> it's the cost but it yeah. was worth that's it funny. it was worth it yeah till today i mean from that time till today the data they are using it and they are happy with the results uh, and uh, yeah it helping them planning new wells uh, and yeah here we are, and uh, after that, after well, uh, 2014, uh, Petrogas was awarded another block by MOG, uh, which was a uh, block 55, uh, Cahel. I don't know if you've heard about it. And uh, yeah, from that time, then uh, I think Petrogas in general thought that, okay, Saada, you have enough time in, uh, in, in Dalil. It is time now to move to Petrogas. Petrogas. Uh, yeah. yeah. Another challenge. <laughs> to, yeah. Come back to Petrogas Cahill now. This is another company to start to, we, we, to I mean, uh, from day one, uh, we managed to establish the company. It is an independent company if you think about it, but it was within uh, the uh, Petrogas uh, building, Semka, mm -hmm. with the Petrogas Rima, if you hear about uh, it, is within the same uh, building. Yeah, well, I took the challenge again, I came back to from Dalili to Petrogas Cahill, I managed the execution of the committed work program for Block 55, from phase one, from yeah, phase one, which was mainly exploration. Uh, well, that time it was required mainly reprocessing of the existing uh, seismic data again, and acquire new seismic data and drilling of uh, of wells. 
That's that is that is a very interesting history. And I just I just wanted to ask you, was it did you feel that as like every time you were presented with something new, you would just go back to the drawing board and restart it again and it would get easier every single time to start from beginning because you moved from PDO all the way to Petrogas. Petrogas took you to the Lille and you had to start again from scratch. And then you had to go to another organization, which is back to Petrogas and start from scratch. Did it get easier? Well, it was not a difficult, especially from Dalili to Petrogas, it is one company. Yeah, there are few differences between them from there and here and, and there. But uh, in general, it is the same thing and the same, almost same work. It's just a different uh, organization, different uh, well, uh, expectation, different uh, activities, I could say. I mean, okay, here in Petrogas Cahel, I was considered initially as a technical team leader uh, to, well, starting forming a team, yeah, in, uh, interviewing and, uh, yeah, having a couple of, um, well, team members uh, working uh, together to execute the committed work uh, program. So we prepared from A to Z, I mean, from uh, technical work program to uh, what is the, the commercial part as well, uh, the economic part of the, the project itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to present it to Ministry of Oil and Gas. Uh, we get uh, the endorsement, yeah, come back and we start the program, executing a program uh, and so on. Uh, Late at the end of this, uh, late at the end of the project, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, I was given a title of the subsurface manager, which, uh, yeah, it, it was just uh, something uh, a reward, which after the, uh, after the ending of the phase one. Yeah, a hard earned yeah. reward. I can't imagine. <laughs> it's yeah. a hard earned yeah. reward, definitely. So, so. As a highly successful yeah. woman in your field, um, what is the proudest moment of your profession? Well, uh, from that, uh, what I can say, hmm, this is, uh, there's so many things which I, uh, I'm proud of, uh, of it. So many yeah, things we're proud of for you too. I can say so many things we're proud of for you too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, maybe the, the ability to ch achieve company expectation and to serve my country to my level best. And at the same time, being able to support uh, others, especially those uh, who like to like to excel in their career. Yeah, maybe I can That's touch me. one uh, element uh, my my time during working with Dalil. Please yeah? do. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm, I realized the Lille field, yeah, it, it's that the one which uh, I think uh, gave me more, conf more confidence in working uh, independent, yeah, which I still uh, remember it in my head. I mean, uh, going through all those, uh, I mean, uh, well, reprocessing of the data, acquiring new seismic, and at the same time, uh, well, supporting operation. Uh, yeah, so, well, at that time, that project itself, uh, it gave me more confidence uh, that I can say there's nothing else uh, can stop me doing it. It's just okay. you have to yeah. start it. Yeah. You just have Definitely. To start it. Yeah, and then everything will, uh, will be coming easy. But you, you need, of course, uh, someone else behind you. I mean, uh, friends, uh, if they say nobody, no, there's no support within that particular organization, then uh, yes, you need from a previous uh, organization to give your support. Or, yeah, but definitely, I, if I think, if I think yeah. back, yeah, if I think back of what I have d I've done in Dalil, then I'm always uh, proud of it. 
That's definitely, definitely. I'm so glad you touched the topic of support. That's why GSO right now is trying to create a platform for female geologists, not even female geologists, just geologists in general for us to be all in touch and build a network so that we can help each other. And we have someone like you to actually mentor us and mentor other geophysicists who are in the same field as you. Definitely, Sada. So um, what are the, some of the biggest challenges you faced at work? Let's say working for Petrogas. Mm, well, uh, I can say the challenge, biggest challenge uh, is, I can say there's so many yeah, at, at work, but um, I can say the biggest one, uh, to my perspective, I was thinking is work-life balance especially when having small children. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was not- so, so how do you balance that? How do you balance between work and being a mother? That That is, I think, a question all the female geoscientists want to know. This is a very important question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, initially it was not an issue when you were, you were single, yeah? You could spend long hours at work, sometimes taking home uh, work or even going back to work during weekends. Yeah, but when you start having kids, yeah, the personal life is starting to change, started to suffer due to work commitment. You want to please both uh, parties. I mean, Party. you have a family, you want to raise them. Uh, yeah, you have to take care of your family to raise to raise them properly. And at the same time, you have work and you want to succeed in that side as well. So, well, uh, but then always when you are in a situation like this, uh, you'll start to think about solution. I realize, I mean, okay, now I need to change, but how? Yeah, I always asking myself, how can I do this? Uh, how this is not right what I'm doing because uh, sometimes I'll stay at work and uh, I come back home a bit late and uh, I have a lot of uh, things uh, pending in, in, at home. Yeah, so I thought, well, I needed to succeed at work and at the same time to, I want to make sure I take care of my family properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... And lots of ideas started to come up what to do. Either drop uh, the job, concentrate uh, on your priority if your family is more priority. But then I said, no, I'll, I will sit down and put, uh, I, I want to understand uh, what is, uh, what is it? What is the problem? Yeah, I need to do both. And yes. believe me, if you, and uh, the business goals on what is expected from from you, yes. Mm -hmm. And you you start your balancing or prioritizing your activity, work activities, and uh, your home uh, activities as well. Yeah. Then uh, everything came much easier. Yeah. It is just a matter mm -hmm. of time management. Uh, so I gave up uh, working after working hours. I gave up uh, working a weekend. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did so you Did you feel sad? That's... Did you feel sad giving up those working hours and stuff? I mean, well, my main question to you, and I think everybody wants to know: Are you yeah. a mother first and then a geophysicist second, or a geophysicist first and then a mother <laughs> second? <laughs> I can, I, guess I can say both are equal, uh, well, uh, I, both are equal to me. I wanted both, yeah? yeah. But of course, yeah. uh, I always work for my family, yeah? Uh, she did, I always reminding myself, I do go working, uh, well, I love my job, and at the same time, I love my family. So which yes. one comes first? Yeah, it, it is yeah. a very yeah. difficult question, yeah, which one to choose. Okay, my family, of course, is coming first. Eh? No question about that, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I always I tell myself that uh, I'm working for them to provide them with a better education, with a better life, yeah. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. And if you have, you have kids that you want to also encourage to, 
to keep on track with their career and to go and want more for themselves in the world, of course. Exactly, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for 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 I mean, for your information, I have three boys. Yeah, and uh, yeah. After the boys, and uh, they're, they're, it's, it's not easy, I mean, to keep them uh, idle at home doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, uh, always they will be looking forward for different things to do with you when they when they see you back. So, yeah, well, I, myself, I like uh, sports. Yeah, I thought uh, I have to do something uh, to encourage my boys and uh, make them... I like it so we can do together so together. we all yeah together and spend the time together as a family otherwise it will be difficult i mean if they have different interests and you have different interests then uh, yeah it will be difficult so i always in, uh, trying to encouraging them and providing them with all the opportunities to try different type of sports from a young age yeah, that, that is so. really good. And, <laughs> and they're lucky boys because boys do love sports, most of them. So, yeah. so <laughs> lucky, lucky to have you as a mother. <laughs> lucky. And I love, but, I, I, love I, I love the sport as well. So I spend most of the time with them. I mean, doing different type of sports. I even joined karate classes with them. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> you can't believe it. I mean, but unfortunately, I didn't succeed in, in that. <laughs> I end up with the only white belt. White belt. <laughs> I end still, up still it's, uh, it's A plus for effort, definitely as a mother, A plus for effort. Yeah. So, oh, Saza, I wanted to actually, I actually wanted to, to go back to one point you said. So you said when you were when you when you were trying to balance the work and of course being a mother, you said that the this options these different options came to your head and one of the options was maybe just leave work you know instead of cutting down if you just want to be focused on that. I wanted to ask you like how how do you think how can more more women be encouraged to work in your field like if they're they're faced with such like questions in their head too? But how do you feel like? you can encourage more women to work in your field. Yeah, well, it yeah. is uh, working in the working geophysics in field is just a matter of understanding what it is, what is geophysics is, yeah? I mean, geophysics is similar to any other science subject, yeah? It is just a study of physical aspects of us using different range of methods, uh, I mean, uh, gravity, magnetic, electrical, and seismic, that require data gathering, uh, re um, processing, and evaluation. I think it is a very straightforward uh, field, and it is a wonderful career. Yeah, I've been working as an exploration geophysics from the for more than twenty years now. Yeah, and I never get bored. Every day you discover and learn something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's 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 really good, and and of course I'm going to ask you the most important question. I mean, as a fe as a successful female geophysicist, what has been your experience working in a very male dominated industry? Because I'm sure I'm sure you said that you went to Leeds around in the 1990s. So were there a lot of geophysicists that were females, and then you came back to Oman, and then you went to PDO, and I'm sure there wasn't there were like probably a few, not so many like we do right now. So what has been your experience working in a very male-dominated industry? Yeah, well, uh, always working with the male-dominated, uh, it seems uh, challenging, yeah? Uh, sometimes we do create fears by ourselves. Of course, being a female, I will face a lot of, I uh, mean, challenges. For me, it was not a big issue is from young age, I was involved or studied with the male colleagues. And when I went to university, I was the only female in the class among uh, 18 uh, classmates who are male. Wow. It's wow. Not, it, it was not only male, I mean, from one country, they were also from different nationalities. Different countries, wow, different, yeah. yeah different, <laughs> different countries and yeah. They would have different cultures as well. It was, I mean, uh, 
well, a kind of uh, challenge for me to, to deal with, with them initially. But uh, I think you needed to pause and start uh, studying them. Yeah. And uh, when you heard you everyone, we have to start studying them. We have to start studying. Them. Yes, you have to start <laughs> understanding them. Yeah, you have to put, to know your boundaries as well, and you have to know what they, what do they want, and what do they want to be treated back from you. Yeah, mm -hmm. based on my experience, male colleagues are more supportive, honestly, to ladies. You just have to know how to deal with them and how they like to be treated. <laughs> yeah, if <laughs> if we want to be successful and treated equally, I think we should avoid uh, creating environment of competition among ourselves and them. Oh, yeah, definitely. And to try definitely, to yeah. And, yeah, and to try to remove in our mind uh, that the way. I mean, we have to prove that we are equal or better than them. I think this putting them off naturally. That. Yeah. That, that is a very spot on point. That is a very, very good point to bring up. Definitely, definitely. So so thank you so much for sharing that with us. So I, I just have a few last questions to ask before we go to our question segments. Um, how do you imagine our money women here in the next 50 years? <laughs> this is a really <laughs> very, very tough question. I mean, uh, in you want me to say in 50 years, that's a very long uh, way from now. I mean- hey, we uh, completed our first 50 <laughs> years. So so we're looking ahead yeah. for the next 50 years too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we came uh, in general, I mean, Omani women has come a long way in terms of supporting our country development. That is no doubt. I mean, in different disciplines, yeah. It will not happen without support of our late uh, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. May Allah rest his soul in peace. And of course, from our hard work yeah, and uh, commitment and dedication to, to this country. Yeah. And I trust that this will not stop there. Yeah. Our many women will continue. I'm, I'm sure they are very hard workers. Yeah, definitely. and I'm sure yes, yes, definitely. They will, they we will. are we do have a reputation for being hard workers. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. We are always uh, our sky is our limit and uh, we'll continue to excel in different positions within different organizations, yeah. Definitely. Under the support under the support of course of our new leader, his majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq. May Allah protect him and give him long life, yeah. Thank you so yeah, much for, for sharing that with <laughs> us. Thank you so much because because that is a very positive outlook to the future of our money women, especially in in such fields. You know, since this is yeah, like yeah. a field that we're breaking into, and and you're leading one of them. So so it's definitely definitely very important to to remember that there is a positive yeah. outlook there. So yeah, what is yeah, your yeah. message? To, yes, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I just want to comment more on that one because uh, today to uh, all the focus on gender equality has been around the representation on the number of women yeah, in the yes. workforce yeah. and what level they are. What is the diversity part of the story? Mm -hmm. Which is the, uh, and uh, still we have the inclusion part of the story. I think uh, this part we needed to work on it yeah definitely. The, inclusion, definitely. the inclusion or the experience and that's the perhaps i mean uh, where there is a greatest opportunity ad for advancing women in the future definitely definitely inclusion is extremely important and i think like you said to actually remove that barrier and the competitiveness that it's male against female we just we're just geophysicists we're all we're only geoscientists let's just remove that element and be one <laughs> That is definitely a very, yes, very good I point think, you brought up. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, I think Saada, we shouldn't create a this barrier. Yeah. Definitely. So, Saada, tell us what is your message to young women leaders like such as yourself who want to help build the nation of Oman and to, to, to develop more and, and work towards the His Majesty's 2020, 2040 vision? Yeah, I just say if I can. Uh, well, stated correctly, our vision uh, yeah, is uh, 
as I understand it, it is to transform the country to a better life. Yeah. And uh, within that, uh, well, path, I think uh, we have to be as one. Yeah. I mean, there's, we, we, we remove this uh, discrimination between male and female, male and, and female, and they continue to support a young profession by providing them opportunities to develop themselves and encourage on continuous learning. Yeah. I believe uh, knowledge gaining knowledge is a power and it is a key to the future yeah so let's be effective leaders and let us lead by example i mean our young professional or young leaders they need to learn from us Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Sada, for answering all of our questions and sharing your story with us. We really are honored to have you on our platform today. Thank you so much. So um, for the next 10 minutes, we're going to be taking some of your questions. Um, there are there are a few questions over here. So I'm going to ask uh, one of this. So. Oh, there's a person from. Uh, there's a person called uh, Salah Al Khurbash. He asked, "Are you looking forward for retirement?" <laughs> <laughs> Do I look forward for retirement? <laughs> well, uh, why not? No, not why yet. Not, not yet. Not. Don't say. Don't say why not. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that is an. an, an, an that's it. I mean, if you retire, doesn't mean you are you are out of your physics or your physical community. Maybe it will give you more time to focus and give more to the community. Definitely, definitely, Salah. I hope you like the answer she gave you. That is a very spot on answer. Um, there's a question from Fozia Hassan. She asked, "Do you always get support from your family members at your work field for your work?" Yeah. Well, for the work, not really, I mean, but of course, for family, taking care of my, my children, yes, I do get support sometimes, mm -hmm. especially when they are young. Is your family but supportive in, of your career? Are they are they supportive of your career? Like when you're when you're in the zone, you need to you need to do some serious geophysics work. Are they very supportive? Are they understanding too? There's no body geophysics in my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they they have no clue what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have so only you're just one... doing, what, doing it, and they they're like, "Mama's doing something," but we don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have only one sister. Well, I have a sister who's a geophys a ge geologist. Yeah, and uh, we were together during our studies. This is the only one who might understanding uh, what I'm saying in terms of your geophysics. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that the rest, <laughs> the rest are all are engineers. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so it is girl power. So you experienced girl power from an early on age. So you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, no, there is one more question from. Yeah. There's one more question from Hissam Rawahi. Um, what made you decide to change from technical position to a management position? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> from the field yeah. to in the office. <laughs> I didn't, uh, well, it was not an option. Yeah. But I like the idea. And so, so did you say one idea. day that it's enough? I want to sit in the office now. <laughs> no. No, no, it was not uh, actually a, a dramatical change or a sharp change like that. Uh, well, it is, it, and I'm still doing a technical work, although I was uh, managing uh, a, 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 a department, but still uh, I was always involved on the technical work, which is I'm still uh, involved till today. Definitely, you can't you can't get away from it. You're you're still a geophysicist yeah. by heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have a question it's here. From, from, <laughs> definitely. So we have a question here from Harith. Um, do you have a do you have a message for students that don't know what to study? Mm, Harith, uh, 
Be careful because people are going to be future geophysicists right now. So. <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, ge geophysics is a, is a very wide subject. I mean, uh, it's from uh, from gravity to magnetic, uh, seismic, uh, electrical. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you are interested on uh, studying the earth on uh, physical aspect of it, then uh, yes, why not? I mean, uh, if for students, I always do this, what you call uh, shadowing training. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have like, you've heard about it. I mean, this yeah. is, uh, uh, when I do get some students from uh, school at a uh, high level, say in the grade 11, they do come uh, and uh, sit next to me. I go through what I'm doing uh, just to give them a brief uh, on what is uh, geophysics all about and it is a very fruitful uh, i mean training for them i would mm -hmm. encourage you if you are, you are a student harris and you want to know more about geophysics please contact me and come and uh, yeah i will i will share with you more about it and i'm she sure how generous is. Is. so generous so everybody <laughs> who ever who wants to go down to geophysics, you have a, a leader here in the mm -hmm. geophysics physics, um, uh, sector. So you guys definitely contact her. She's doing some shadow training. <laughs> so we do have a few other questions. Um, we have a question from, from our vice. Um, she's uh, Aisha Hajri. So she's asking, thanks a lot, Saada, for sharing your experience. I would like to ask you, what is your advice to accelerate learning and development in the geophysical career? Well, uh, to accelerate learning, I mean, always keep asking, yeah, read, don't keep yourself behind uh, of technology, yeah. Technology uh, is very important, it's always developing. Yeah. Is, every single day technology is advancing, especially with, uh, I don't know, I mean, other field, but I noticed uh, within your physical uh, career, there is quite a lot of uh, new things uh, coming up every day. So if you, you just lay down behind, you'll miss a lot, yeah? So keep it up with, uh, yeah, studying and uh, reading. Google, I mean, nowadays uh, we have everything in the network. Uh, uh, just Google it and uh, you'll get, uh, well, enough information you are look. I mean, to help you on, on those kind of, uh, when uh, developing yourself in geophysics. Definitely, definitely, that's, that's very important. I'm glad that you touched on those topics, especially improving yourself constantly. That is extremely important in a geosciences field in general. So that is definitely a very good uh, point you pointed out. We have, uh, the questions keep rolling in, Thada. So <laughs> we, have, we have one more question. This, I hope this is gonna be the last one. So how much, divers <laughs> how much has diversity helped you to excel your work throughout your career internationally? So has diversity actually contributed to your success? Okay, this is Elias now, yeah? <laughs> yes, Elias. Hi, Elias. Elias. Yes, hi, Elias. Well, a diversity will always help you, but again, uh, uh, you, you meet different people, you, div you meet a different culture within different uh, countries. Uh, people have different uh, uh, way of thinking, yeah, of different way of doing things, yeah. So by uh, moving around, uh, I think you, you start learning different things from different places. Yeah, I will encourage, I mean, uh, our young career, I mean, our young uh, professional, don't stick at one place. Yeah, even if you are within, uh, you're within your organization, try to move around, meet other people, learn from, the, from them, yeah? The, the world is is small now yeah you can meet people from i mean international from within i mean from your desktop you can talk to people 
my 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 self i believe being i mean moving around uh, gain those uh, challenges uh, meeting working with the different uh, people from different countries i think uh, it has opened up uh, and improve my conf- my level of confidence as well definitely definitely and and it makes you it makes you step out of your box and definitely no no fear of the unknown because we usually are very stuck and happy with our comfort zone so i think i think that's what you're trying to tell us go out there get out of your comfort zone yes 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 definitely. i mean always we have that fear exactly i mean of starting new things yeah always it will not uh, it will it will be there but once you move and uh, start something uh, different doors will open up definitely definitely thank you so much sada for your time and for joining us at gso for the armani female geosciences recognition series we are honored to have you and thank you so much for taking questions from people <laughs> too and answering them so well Thank you so much again. Um, we hope that this is the beginning of a new era in our mind where we can create an amazing platform for all our many female geoscientists and we can start networking. So remember everyone, um, Saada is available for shadow shadow training. So don't be afraid to contact her. So thank you so much Saada for joining yeah. us today. Yeah. You are most welcome, yeah. I'm pl- it is my pleasure being here with you guys. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to meet you all, I mean, uh, in person. Thank you. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye.